If you're wasting a lot of time creating and sending invoices, then you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going step by step into how to build an automated process that takes data from Airtable and automatically creates and sends an invoice from QuickBooks. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we can help you reclaim your time, swing on by our website. I will also include a link to our free crash course. If you want to check that out, you can always sign up and learn Airtable quickly and easily. But without further ado, let's just jump into the meat of today's video, and that is all about creating these invoices. Now, First, before we get you know too far into it, I do wanna say that normally with an invoice, you will create line item detail. So you're gonna normally have an invoice that links to a lot of different details so that you could have different line items that get added to your invoice. That is an incredibly complex automation to build, too much for this short video. So I want to just preface this by saying we are gonna be only using one single invoice table that stores our information there rather than linking to other line items. Far more complicated, but I think the same you know, framework will get you set up and running and then you could always explore the more complex uh, relationships on your own. So let's go ahead and jump into my screen here and you'll see that I have a pretty straightforward Airtable database already set up. I have clients and I have invoices. So my clients here, pretty straightforward. We have first name, last name, email, company. Sometimes you'll link out to a different table for company. In this case, I'm just using text. And then of course, this table of clients contact or uh, links to my invoices. So let's flip over to invoices and take a look at that. Now you'll see that I've got a lot more views here for this and I'll go into detail on why in just a moment. But the high level information that we need in order to send an invoice is what's the product or service? That's this part right here. What's the amount? That's this part. And you know, is it being created today? Obviously, in this case, this is a created time, so this will always capture the metadata of the database whenever this record was created. So this will this will not be altered, right? This, this is always just gonna be today, whatever the day is that you create the invoice. Now, we're gonna record when an invoice is paid, of course. Uh, that's another automation that I'm not gonna get into here today. But, uh, oh, and one other thing is, of course, we also wanna bring back the invoice link. It's really convenient to add that invoice link here because if you wanna really quickly and easily take a look at that invoice without having to log out of Airtable, log into your QuickBooks or whatever you know software you're using, it's just more convenient to just click it and see what's going on there. So you could always just pop that in and you know give it a moment to load. And then of course, this is gonna show you, oh, this is the invoice from you know this particular example that we sent to that client, et cetera. So dropping back into Airtable, you'll notice that I have this last field here that's called create. And what I've done here is I'm actually using a webhook. Now, there are two different ways that we write automations to Zapier. We can use the native integration between Airtable and Zapier. And what the way this one works is uh, Zapier will come and look at your Airtable database every few minutes, depending on your plan. And if it sees new stuff, then it will fire an automation. But sometimes you don't wanna wait. Sometimes you don't wanna wait a couple of minutes and for those times, for those instances, we have webhooks. Webhooks are a feature within Zapier where you get a specific URL for this particular automation and you can pass additional data to that URL. That's exactly what we've done here. So we've created a very special formula that I'm gonna be going into detail on in just a moment. But essentially when we hit this button to the, whatever this URL is, when we click it, that will fire our automation instantaneously. All right, so let's take a look then at those formulas. So I've built several formulas. Normally, I would condense this all into one formula, but I want to make this as straightforward as possible. The first step to this is actually starting your automation in Zapier. So go to zapier.com, set up your zap, and the trigger event that you wanna start with is called a catch hook. So set it up as follows. Webhooks by Zapier, catch hook. And then on your customized request, you get a unique URL that is unique to you and your account. By the way, quick pause, this does require a paid Zapier plan. So if you're on a free plan, 
this is not available to you. Although I think after you see the power of this automation, you're probably gonna wanna be on a paid plan. So copy this URL, just grab it right here. And that is gonna be the first of your formulas. So I'm gonna flip over to my formulas view here. And all I've done here is I've just created a view where I've hidden all the other noise and I just wanna look at my formulas. So the first formula is your webhook URL. And all I've done here is I've created a formula and inside of quotation marks, either single or double quotes, I've pasted my webhook URL. That's the first step. Now, second step is writing a long concatenate formula. And what I'm doing here is I'm passing variables to that catch hook so that when I push a particular uh, field and when I, when I activate that URL, it's gonna pass these variables over. Now this is obviously more advanced, more complicated, and we don't have to do this if we build with that native integration because Zapier automatically gets all that data. But if all I did was click the webhook by itself, this isn't gonna pass over any unique information here because this is identical every time. So what I need to do is I need to pass over data that's relevant to this particular record, this particular invoice and client that I need to make sure that I'm working with. So if you take a look at inside of this formula, it's, it's pretty robust, but don't let it scare you. All we're doing is concatenating. We're starting with the webhook URL. That's this field right here. And then we're adding question mark, and then we're, we're telling it the name of this variable that we're gonna pass. So in this case, question mark, company name, and uh, you'll notice, of course, that company name has an underscore in between it, and then equals. Now, after that, I need to pass through the company name field. So this is data that I'm getting from this record, so it's unique for every invoice. After that, this is the next parameter I'm passing. I wanna call, you know, create a new variable, and I'm calling this client email, and then I wanna pass the client email. Now, one thing to note here is that in some cases, I do need to use this encode URL component. We need to use this anytime there could potentially be a space in the text that we're passing into that variable. So if you're passing in a company name that has maybe two or three words in the company name, of course there would be spaces there and we can't create a URL with spaces. And so by wrapping that field with this encode URL component, we then make sure that we pass it in a way that a URL can read. You'll notice the same thing down here if we go into this, you know, uh, go further into this. If you're looking at the detail here, I'm passing details about, uh, about the service through. Again, this is the description here that I'm passing through is a field that has spaces in it. So I need to make sure that I'm encoding that into a URL. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm listing out all of the different things that I need to pass into my automation when I push this button. So you see that in every case, these, uh, these records are unique because each of them has you know, different information that makes this particular invoice up, right? Now, the last part of this is my create formula. And I don't want to ever accidentally create an invoice at the wrong time. So I only use a create formula in this case where I'm only bringing in that special concatenate formula that I built I'm only bringing that in if I'm ready to submit the invoice. So let me do one more thing and bring in my status formula here. And you'll notice that my status is set to have a couple of different outputs. And basically this is tracking where within the pipeline is that invoice. If there is a date paid, then my output is three. My, my, Invoice has moved into stage three, which is the paid stage or the, page, the paid status. On the other hand, if it's not paid yet, and if I have an invoice number, then I know that it's been submitted already. Because, and you'll see when I show you the automation, that only when we submit the invoice do we get an invoice number for the record. Now, if that condition isn't met, and if I have, you know, an amount in there already and a date created and you could stipulate whatever, you know, pieces to your process you want to here, but only in that case am I going to say that the output is ready to submit. So if there's, for example, not an amount in one of my invoices, that, that is I failed to put an amount in there, then it's going to throw this error.
All right, so let's take a look at those kind of like in use here. If I flip into my all records view, you'll see that I have my product service. My description here is dependent on what product or service I've selected. My amount here again is dependent on what product or service I've selected. So these are formula fields that, you know, derive their value based on that product or service. And then you see my different statuses here. So essentially, if I were to flip into my daily use uh, view here, you see that I have these different status and only in the case where the status is ready to submit, do I get that create hook. Now, once I click that hook, that's what fires the automation. So let's take a look at the automation. Inside of Zapier, we already talked about how we're gonna grab that web hook. The next step beyond that is to find or create the customer in QuickBooks. Now you might not use QuickBooks if you have another software. It's a good chance that it also integrates with Zapier and other automation tools. So what I'm telling this is I want you to search for the email field in QuickBooks and I want you to look and see if that information that we captured as the email of this client, I want you to tell me if you find that record. Now if you do, that's great. We're gonna take that record and we're gonna move on to the next step. But if you don't, I want you to create this customer. And this is where we're gonna pass in the company name, the first name of the person, the, uh, you know, or yeah, here, and here it is again, the company name, uh, and then the email. So we wanna pass all of this data into QuickBooks if, they, if we don't find that that client already exists in our accounting system. Now that's all we have to do for that one. Now we are gonna create the invoice and this is step three. So in step three, we're going to say, that we are gonna bring in the customer ID from step two. Remember I told you if we find it, great, we'll move on. If we don't, we'll create it. Well, in either case, we have that customer ID. So we're gonna use that customer for this invoice. We can set it to be due on receipt, unless you have other paying options. And then bring in your product or service. In this case, I'm saying option one. Uh, bring in your detail or your description. And then bring in your amount. Now you might be doing something else where you have like a quantity or a rate. If you have any of that information that you need to bring in, uh, you know, be sure to bring that in as well. From there, we will go on to step four. And this is where we're gonna actually send the uh, invoice. So if you look inside of here, we're just bringing in the invoice ID that we created in step three and we are sending it to the email of the client that was passed in step one. Two more steps. Again, I told you that this was a little bit complex. Just two more to get through. Now we're gonna find the record in Airtable that we just sent from. And we are doing that by looking up the record ID in Airtable, and we are matching it to the record that we got in our webhook. And then lastly, now that we found that record, we are going to update it with the invoice number, that's the doc number, and we are also going to invoice it with the invoice link. So now that I've walked through how this works, let's take one out for a spin and take a look at how we get this to go. So first and foremost, we need to create a new invoice. So we're gonna to go to our form here and I'm gonna pick myself so that it gets sent to me and not a fake email address. Let's say we wanted to create an invoice for this client on this option. I hit submit. Immediately, that information shows up in Airtable. Now, it shows up in the ready to submit status because of the formula that I described earlier. Once I click this URL, it's going to open a new window and it's going to at the same time trigger this automation. So let's go ahead and push that through and take a look and you'll see everything update immediately on my screen here. So that's how quick it all happened. Let's take a look and see exactly what went down here. So we know that it created or found the customer in QuickBooks, created the invoice, then sent the invoice to the customer, updated the invoice number here in our database and provided the invoice link. You'll also notice that it automatically then got moved down to the submitted stage. And that's because we have that formula and status that says, hey, once I have an invoice number and an invoice link, then I know that this invoice has been submitted to be paid. 
Now, the last part is, of course, once that invoice is collected on, let's say we just received payment. Of course, I said this would be another automation that you can build. Once we receive payment, then that invoice moves into the last stage, that is paid invoices. One more thing to check here, of course, is to click on that uh, invoice link and verify that everything got set up appropriately. And so we should see then that, you know, the customer here is me and that it was in the amount that we uh, said, yes, so this is description to $249, etc. So everything, you know, got set up appropriately and it's looking good. And that's it. So now you have the ability to create an invoice immediately only by selecting the customer and what exactly they bought from you. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.